Wouldn't it be nice to have a tool that could help us put pressure on our work without slamming a hammer down? And not just a clicker press to cut out dies, but a tool that can help us with almost every single thing that we do in leatherworking that requires pressure. Punching holes, setting rivets, stamping, cutting dies out, sewing. The Arbor Press is one of the few options that leather workers have for such a tool. This one is the Vivor 3 ton ratcheting Arbor Press. I've had my eye on this for a long time and Vivor kindly provided this press. And I'll tell you how I converted this press for leatherworking, some of the things I like about it, some of the challenges I had to overcome, and you can decide whether this is the tool for you. We sure, sure are trying to do that. Let's do that. Setup is pretty easy. It's a very simple machine. There's just one gear that drives the ram up and down, and that gear can be engaged with this wheel or with the lever over here when you pull the lever down and it engages the teeth on the ratcheting mechanism. So it's very easy to assemble, very easy to understand. Um, even if you're not mechanically inclined, you won't have a problem figuring out this machine. So don't be intimidated by it in that way. When it came, it had just sort of a sticky coating of oil everywhere on it. And that's just to protect the parts from rusting and help them to move more smoothly. So I disassembled everything. I wanted to get it so it was working as smoothly as possible. I just took everything apart right away and got some high quality grease that I applied to the moving parts and made sure everything else was cleaned up really nicely. The casting definitely has some rough spots. It's not a perfect casting. It needs a little bit of work if you want it to be perfect. It's totally workable the way that it is, but if you are the kind of person that just wants to have a little more refined look if that helps you feel better about the work you're doing with this press, then you should take some time and clean it up. And that's what I did because I do think it makes a difference. So I went around this with my Dremel and I touched it up and got rid of all of the sharp points here and there on the casting and one thing led to another and pretty soon I was painting this with some Rust-Oleum semi-gloss black spray paint that I had on hand. and. It, it actually turned out looking really nice. You don't have to do that. It's not necessary, but it does make it look really nice. I think it turned out good, so I was glad that I did that. Um, I even repainted the numbers here on the side. It didn't have any red, which is the original color that this press came with, but um, that's okay. I think the green looks pretty cool too, and it's just what I had on hand. Now let's talk about my modifications, because you might have noticed that Everything on this press does not look exactly like the pictures on Vivorb's website. First of all, the wheel. The old wheel, when I disassembled this, that old wheel never came back on. I, I actually had ordered this one ahead of time. I knew that I wanted to use it, and that was mostly because of a video on Robert Cohen's YouTube channel. The handle that came with it, it's just a solid handle, it doesn't spin at all, so there's, it's not quite as easy to move around. So I put it, this base plate on. And this is a quarter inch thick piece of steel that I ordered off of Etsy. It came with the rounded corners. 
it came perfectly flat and it comes highly recommended from me. It's a great option for being able to cover the base of this. So I actually cut out a piece of this high density plastic material that I also ordered off of Etsy and cut it the exact shape of this space right here so that I can slide my base plate in and it is perfectly flat, held in place. It's not going anywhere. So that worked out really well. I actually got that idea from uh, Jordy's Workshop, another YouTube channel. And then this just rests on top of here to help protect your tools. So this makes a great base plate for punching holes. In fact, I had so much fun punching out those big holes in the leather that I got a little bit carried away on some of my scrap pieces and I accidentally created a currency that my children now use for all of their transactions. So you'll lower this down to the height that you want to work and then you pull the handle until it engages the ratchet mechanism. You can pull and it puts this handle at the exact right height to get the right amount of pressure to be able to pop that in there and that's really handy and then you can just raise this up out of the way lower it down where you want to put the next hole go ahead and punch the hole there but when you lift it back up it doesn't pull the ram with it because it doesn't engage the drive shaft that direction these teeth only engage in a downward direction so See, I can move this back and forth and it's not going to pull it up. So here was my workaround. If you look right here, I have a thumb screw that I tapped. I can pull my handle down, engage the drive shaft, tighten my thumb screw, and I actually have this little crescent wrench here just to get it extra tight. And now this handle is pressing against the drive shaft with this thumb screw and I can now raise the ram up and down with that handle. So it's a lot faster because I'm not having to raise the wheel every time if I know I have to punch holes repeatedly. Just a note on the end of this ram, there's a set screw that you can use to tighten down on these tools. There's about a half inch width hole underneath here that you can slide. Almost all of my tools fit into there. The ones that don't fit into there, I just have to set on the leather and bring this down onto the butt of the tool and then press it down. This light is a sewing light and it works great. It has a magnetic base that allows me to put it wherever I want. And it was only like 12 bucks again. It's just was super affordable and it's really, really nice to have this shining on your work, especially a little bit from the side so that you're not dealing with the shadows quite as much. It, ideally, you could have one on both sides that would basically eliminate shadows, but this works pretty well. And guys, I really don't think the three ton press is too big. I actually really like this size. I, I wanted kind of originally was hoping for something like a two ton press because one and one and a half ton presses that I saw online just didn't look big enough. And I'm glad that I didn't go with those because this is so much more versatile. I, I think it can cut a lot bigger dies. You can put a lot more pressure on it with the the handle and just the size of the ram and the size of the drive um, shaft here just allows it to do more, I think. It's a good size. I put links in the description for all of the different add-ons that I did to this. I put a link in the description for the Vivor 3-ton ratcheting arbor press. 
It's an affiliate link, so I do get a small commission if you purchase an Arbor Press using that link. I just wanna disclose that to you guys. I'm gonna try and put some other affiliate links on there for the different sizes of presses in case you don't want the three ton Arbor Press. But I really think having an Arbor Press in your leather shop is a good idea. And I think that you'd be glad you had it around for a lot of different tasks in leather working. And the Vivor Arbor Presses are about as affordable as they get. If you're the kind of person that's willing to put some work and effort into your tools, you can really make this a great machine that really fits your niche of what you do. That's the versatility of an Arbor Press. Please subscribe. Feel free to express your opinions in the comments. It was a pleasure making this video. I'm really grateful to Vivor for the press and hopefully the information herein will help many of you who are looking for options. Tool solutions, they're hard to come by sometimes and this is a solution. God bless. Mm -hmm.